Christ, our God and Savior, becoming a human being. And so, with that said, let me pray here uh, before we get started, and then, uh, and then the Christmas story will begin. Father, thank you for this wonderful evening. We get to be together to celebrate you, Lord Jesus. Father, we, uh, we pray that as this story is unfolded and retold by our little kiddos here, Lord, we just pray that there would be a freshness to it, to our hearts. Lord God, that, that it would not be, the meaning would not be overshadowed by the cuteness of our kids, but God, that, uh, that the depth of and the lengths that you went to out of love for us to become a human being so that you would die in our place, so that you would pay the penalty of our sin, so that you would remove the barrier between us and that relationship with God our Father. Let that meaning not be lost tonight, God. In your name we pray. Amen. This is the story of the first Christmas, the night Jesus was born. We celebrate this to remember the hope and joy that this tiny baby brought to the world on that extraordinary night in Bethlehem over 2,000 years ago. For Jesus' birth did bring hope and joy to the world. Hope, because at that time there was much wrongdoing and fighting on the earth. The people were looking for a sign from God that he would always be there to look after them. Joy, because after many years of waiting, God had finally fulfilled his promise to send a man, a savior, or Messiah to earth. He would go among the people and teach everybody his peaceful and loving ways. That man would be God's greatest gift of mankind, his son, Jesus Christ. To prepare the world for the this man, God asked different men and women to prophesy or foretell that Jesus was coming. These people were called prophets, and this is what they said. Be 
behold, a virgin shall bring forth a son, and his name will mean God is with us. Out of Bethlehem, one will go forth to be the king of Israel. For unto us a child will be born, unto us a son shall be given, and his name shall be called Wonderful, the Prince of Peace, and there shall be no end to, the, to this kingdom. The prophets foretell a wonderful story. Yes, the baby who, yes, the baby who, and te- yes, the baby who end up teaching us like in God's ways. And he will live with us forever. Sending my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. Then the Lord you are seeking will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant, one you look for so eagerly, is surely coming, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Then God was silent for over 400 years. During the time the nation of Israel waited for the coming of their Messiah, little did they know how he would come or the message that he would bring. They expected him to come as a warrior to free their sins, free them from their enemies. Instead, he came as a lamb to be sacrificed for their sins. as he promised 400 years later God prepared to send his messenger to prepare the way for his son Jesus God sent the angel Gabriel to a man named Zachariah from the priestly family whose wife was also from the family of Aaron the first priestly the gospel of Luke records it like this and they had no children because Elizabeth was barren and they were both advanced in years. Now it came about while he was performing his priestly duties service before God, he was chosen by lot to enter the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right of the altar of incense. And Zacharias was troubled when he saw him, but fear gripped him, and the angel said to him, Do, do not be afraid, Zacharias, for I bring you um, for your wife will bear you a son, and you will name him um, John, and and he will be in great sight of the Lord, and is filled with the Holy Spirit while yet in his mother's womb. It is he who will be the forerunner before him in the spirit and power of Elijah? How shall I be certain? I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in years. I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of the Lord. And behold, you will be silent and unable to speak until the day these things take place because you did not believe my words. And the people were waiting for Zechariah and were wondering at his delay in the temple. But when he came out, he was unable to speak to them. And then they realized he had seen a vision in the temple. And he kept making signs to them and reminded me, When his priestly duets were ended, he went back home, and Elizabeth, his wife, became pregnant. Now, when God was ready to give Jesus to the world, 
he chose a good, pure woman named Mary to be his mother. Mary lived in the village of Nazareth and was engaged to be married to Joseph, a humble carpenter who lived nearby. One day, when Mary was alone, God sent his messenger, the angel Gabriel, to appear before her. Hail Mary, the Lord is with thee, and blessed art thou among women. Mary was at first frightened and confused by this greeting of the angel of God, but then Gabriel told her that God had chosen her to give birth to Jesus. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you are in great sight of the Lord, and it, you will bear a son, and you will name him Jesus, and he will be called the Son of God, and his kingdom will have no end. And behold, your um, relative Elizabeth has also conceived a son, and he and she who, who was called barren is now in her sixth month. Behold, the bond slave of the, slo the Lord, be it done to me according to my name, according to his word. Now, at this time, Mary rose and went quickly to the city of Judea, where Elizabeth had lived, and she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and she cried with a loud voice. And how has it happened to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greetings reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what had been spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary, and Mary stayed with Elizabeth for three months and returned home. Elizabeth did have a son, and all their relatives wanted to name him Zachariah, after his father, but Elizabeth insisted that his name should be John. Then they asked Zachariah what his name should be. As soon as Zachariah indicated that his name should be John, as the angel had said, he could speak again and was filled with the spirit and prophesied. And you child will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give his people the knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sin. Not long after Mary had returned to Nazareth, the angel Gabriel appeared to Joseph one night as he slept. In Joseph's dream, the angel of the Lord told him of God's plan. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for she is conceived with the Holy Spirit, and you will name him Jesus, because he will save the people from their sins. When Joseph awoke, he went to Mary with joy in his heart. Both Mary and Joseph had heard that God's son would be coming, and they were overjoyed to be chosen by God to be his parents. And so Mary and Joseph went back to living their quiet lives, keeping God's secret only between themselves. Now, at that time, the land they lived in was ruled by the Romans, who were mighty but wicked rulers of the enormous empire. The chief rule, a man named Cyrus Augustus, was mean and greedy. He wanted to tax everyone in the land to raise money for himself and the Romans. So he issued a decree. Every man shall return to the place of his birth to be counted. That way Caesar would know every person who lived in his country so he could be taxed. And so Joseph and Mary left Nazareth to return to a small village of Bethlehem. About 90 miles away where Joseph had been born, it was a difficult journey across the hot land, but they finally reached Bethlehem. By then Mary was very tired and about to give birth. When they arrived, 
the city had already been crowded with other people who had come back to be registered, and all of the inns were full. But Joseph sought shelter anyway at several inns and hoped that someone might spare room for Mary. We have traveled a long way, and my wife is very tired. Is there any room in your inn? I'm sorry, my room's full. We have traveled a long way, and my wife is very tired. Is there any room in your inn? Sorry, my inn is full. But one innkeeper looked at Mary, who was great with child, and felt sorry for her, and he said, We have traveled a long way, and my wife is very tired. Is there any room in your inn? I have no room in my inn, but you may stay in the stable out back. Thank you very much for your kindness, sir. The stable was for animals, for the donkeys, cows, and sheep that people had brought with them. But Mary and Joseph were grateful for any shelter they could get that night in the late town of Bethlehem. gave birth. Jesus was born. Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the everlasting Prince of Peace, for he is called all these things, was born to a simple carpenter and his wife. And to make the baby Jesus comfort, Mary wrapped him in swaddling clean strips of white cloth and laid him down gently in the soft hay in the manger, the animal's feeding box. That same night, there were shepherds watching their flocks of sheep on the steep hills surrounding Bethlehem. The shepherds were poor who wore rough, simple clothing. For them, nights were usually dark and lonely. But the night that Jesus was born, the angel Gabriel suddenly appeared above them in the sky. Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring good news of great joy, which shall be for everyone. For today in the city of David is born a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a ba babe wrapped in clouds, lying in a manger. And suddenly they were with the angels, a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among, with, among men with whom he is well pleased.
the angels had departed, the shepherds decided that they should go to see the baby Jesus right away. Let's go straight to Let's go straight to Bethlehem and see what has happened which the Lord has made known to us. The shepherds were the first to see the worship, the baby Jesus. They searched their pockets for some gifts they can give him. What shall I give to this king? I'm just a poor shepherd. If only we had riches to honor him by. Brothers, we can offer him our we can offer them our hearts. Faith and trust in Jesus were all that mattered to God. For the shepherds, just seeing Jesus filled them with hope for all people. The Christ had come to the earth, they cried, to give us rebirth. Far to the east of Bethlehem, three wise men of great knowledge noticed an unusually bright star in the sky. The star is amazing, it's so bright. Yes, it's as if it's trying to tell us something. Maybe it is. Could it be a sign that the Savior has come? That the one that the prophets wrote of so long ago? Yeah, that's it. Let's follow it. A 
upon their camels, the three wise men, or Magi, as they are now known, journey for several weeks, faithfully following the star shining brightly in the sky, until it stood over the little stable in Bethlehem, where the holy infant lay. When they saw the baby Jesus, the three wise men fell on their knees in humble worship. They lay at the feet of baby Jesus, the valuable treasures they had brought and with which to honor him. The first king gave him gold. The second king gave him sweet-smelling frankincense, And the third king gave him perfume like myrrh, for they knew they had at last found their savior, God's son, who had come to bring peace on earth and silent and holy night. the story of the first crispit but that's not the end of the story just as the prophet just as it was prophesied that god had, would send his son to earth he was faithful in fulfilling that prophecy as god had also prophesied that jesus will come a second time the first time he came as a lamb bringing mercy and forgiveness the second time he would come as the lion of judah with his sword in his hand bringing justice
Revolution declares, look, he is coming with the clouds in glory. He will capture every eye, even of those who pierce him through. All the nations of the earth will be pierced with grief when he appears. Yes, may all this be done according to his plan. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the, the very beginning and the very end. The one who is, the one who was, and the one who is coming, the all-powerful. No one knows the day or the hour, but he tells us again and again to be ready. May he find us faithful when he comes again. <laughs>